When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. The Ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever crook in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law, and, and they didn't didn't know fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me. And baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. Ladies Night was started in his honor. Barstools pulled themselves out for him. The only thing Chuck Norris is afraid of is her. Cheers is the most memorable bar in the world. You may not always watch comedy, but when you do, watch Cheers. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Frigidaire, it means the first refrigerator. It means a history of innovations that help make your home life better. And now we introduce the new Frigidaire French Door Refrigerator with over 100 ways to organize for maximum flexibility. Built with adjustable flip up and slide under shelving and stackable crisper drawers. It's the refrigerator that flexes to fit it all, no matter what your day will bring. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. Today we're going to be talking about a haunted house in Porterville. Do you believe in Ghostbusters? 436 Me TV Option 11. But first we're going to have a little news segment coming up in just a moment. And back here on the show, on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Friday morning. Glad to have you along. Uh, it is Friday, and the weekend is upon us, so a lot going on to talk about before we get into our main topic here. First of all, you're watching us on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6, and of course now 13.1. That's live Monday through Friday. And then you can catch the replay at 2 o'clock, 13.6 on YouTube, and 8 o'clock at night on 13.5 Biz TV. And I want to mention that Turf Medics is our sponsor today here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. Glad to have Lorenzo Neal and company uh, on board with all of us here at MeTV Fresno. All right, we're going to do a little news segment here and then get into our main topic. I do want to mention that a dramatic ending to that search for those two suspected gunmen in Paris uh, who had ties to Al-Qaeda in Yemen. Saeed and Sharif Kawachi both confirmed dead after a series of explosions and rapid gunfire in a small town just north of Paris uh, earlier today. And almost si simultaneously, it took place at a kosher deli in Paris a second gunman who had ties to the brothers also shot dead by French officials. The two brothers uh, were believed to be the ones responsible for that uh, gunning down the shooting of 12 people at that very popular magazine uh, in Paris on Wednesday. In the meantime, I want to talk about those two Yosemite climbers. Let's go to the picture, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Got three different photos talking about Tommy Caldwell, Caldwell and Kevin Jorgensen, who will try to complete the most difficult free climb ever this coming weekend. It's a 3,000-foot climb above Yosemite Valley. They are using only ropes that hold their uh, tents alongside the mountain. That's where they sleep. That's where they eat. That's where they drink. That's where they go to the restroom. Both climbs have been, or climbers have been suffering from severe cold. 
They are using their bare hands and fingers to climb the mountain of El Capitan, and they've had portions of their skin actually torn off. Caldwell and Jorgensen are from Colorado, expected to finish the climb on Sunday. Most climbers of El Capitan use some type of special equipment to try to aid them to go up the mountain. Not in this case, though. They are free climbing, which is obviously a lot more difficult. And also, a little promo here on Connect With Me. The Spinner Series uh, at the Warner's Theater takes place uh, on Saturday. That would be January the 17th, the uh, Warner's Theater. They're completely redoing their sound system for this. They're going to try to recreate David Bowie, that's Queen Nation, and Space Oddity with David Brighton will try to recreate, um, no, that, that's, uh, Queen Nation is going to try to recreate Queen, of course, and then Space Odyssey, David Brighton will try to recreate David Bowie. That's a great uh, program that's taking place. The Spinner Series all begins on Saturday, January the 17th. And I do want to mention these mailers. You should have gotten one in the mail if you live in Fresno. It has to do with the water rates uh, going up. Let's uh, take a picture of Mark Standrift. He is the communications director for the city of Fresno. His telephone number there at the city is 621-8000. We have not been able to get a hold of him to talk to him about these rates. And so the mailers went out. And I think one of the reasons the city is trying to hold back on any kind of information, they want to mail these out but not really publicize it, hoping that you forget about it. There's the card that you need to check and to sign. You need to sign it as well. Mail it in if you're against those water rates going up. Again, Mark Standrift, the communications director, not able to get a hold of him the past few weeks. If you want to contact him or anybody else at City Hall, like the mayor, 621-8000. We're going to take a short break. Our uh, sponsor today here on Connect With Me, obviously, is Turf Medics and Lorenzo Neal. We're going to be back with our main topic here on Connect With Me in just a moment. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Attention all units. We have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The Men of Chips are on BTV. Hi, I'm John Baker. I'm John Baker. It's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Well, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now Chips. on MeTV Fresno. Xfinity 187. And back here on the program on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno, 436 MeTV Option 11. And uh, our sponsor today is Turf Medics, of course, uh, Lorenzo Neal and company, the former Fresno State uh, running back, uh, doing the sponsorship here on the program. Appreciate that. Hey, today's main topic is ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts, my friends? That is the main topic. I'm talking about, like, poltergeist-type ghosts. You know those ghosts that make a lot of noise? They move stuff around in your house or your garage or your den or whatever, and and then they make all kinds of noise and you don't even know what's going on. I want to go to a picture right now and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, this is in Porterville and this is a home that many people believe has been haunted for many, many, many years. It's called the Zalad House. Looks like something out of that Norman Bates movie, right? Psycho starring Anthony Perkins. Let's go inside the Zalad House, built back in 1891, has a long-standing history of paranormal activity for years, as I said. City of Porterville owns this house. It was gifted to them by the late Pearl Zalad to become an art and cultural museum. The city now gives personalized ghost tours for a mere $25. In fact, PMI, which stands for Paranormal Movement Investigations, is the official organization that calls itself the Ghost Hunting Team, or Ghost Busters of Porterville. The home is filled with all the original furnishings and personal belongings of the Zalid family, and the money from the tours goes toward maintaining the property. Whether or not there are real ghosts occupying the Zalad house is really up for grabs, up for debate, of course. But you can see for yourself, if you go to Porterville, 
and you, in fact, take the tour. So the question of the day, do you really believe in paranormal activity? That's our question of the day, and so we'll put that on the screen, and you can call in, 436-ME-TV-OPTION-11. And maybe a bigger question, have you experienced any paranormal activity in your own home? Live in our studio right now is Heather and Benny Huerta, two historians for the city of Porterville, and they are the hosts and uh, the Facts and Legends walking tour of the downtown Porterville uh, area and the Zalad House. In fact, they are the ghost busters of Porterville. 436 me tv option 11 a pair of ghost busters here in the house today on connect with me on me tv and so call in if you've had any paranormal activity in your own home or maybe you've been one of those people that has actually visited this home in porterville the zalad house it's our main topic today the sponsorship here by turf medics we're back in just a moment this fall there is a place familiar and inviting Timeless and warm. Me TV, a place all your own that you can call home. Hi, honey, I'm home. This fall, home is where you'll find me. You mean to tell me that's all there is to it? That's all. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. They're here. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Hey, anybody see a ghost? They catch the ghost that won't stay dead. They're armed. <laughs> They're dangerous. Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. All right, that's bad. Okay, all right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. Dan Aykroyd, of course, Bill Murray and Ghostbusters, a movie that came out back in the 80s. And, of course, uh, now we have on our studio our own very own Ghostbusters here in the Central Valley out of Porterville, uh, Heather and Benny Huerta. Welcome to the program. And uh, so are you guys the Ghostbusters of Porterville? Is that it? <laughs> you come yeah. out with those suits and the <laughs> No, no hoses? suits, but we are the real things in, in Porterville. We are the real deal in Porterville, though. Well, our suits are what he's wearing today. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, that theme song from Ghostbusters is going to be in my head all day long. You Ours know, too. Just, just, you know, it's, just, it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. But uh, So tell me a little bit about the Zalad House. And um, uh, how long have people thought that maybe there is paranormal activity in this place? Oh, for years. Even whenever Pearl Zalad, the late Pearl Zalad, lived there, she had documented things that she thought was going on in the home. Our first curator that Like what? Like what? Just hearing voices and, and uh, feeling <laughs> like there was something there. She she kind of looked into it a little bit. She sought out um, clairvoyance and uh -huh. uh, so it's, it's just something that uh, was accepted by her, I guess you could say. And then another uh, part of the home, there's a railing yeah. at the bottom of the stairway. There's a place where she never had the top of the railing painted because she felt that there was a connection to her father at this end of the railing because that was the last place he had touched before leaving the home and he died. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And so, Benny, let me ask you, you know the movie Poltergeist. Right. I think it was a series that came out with like two or three movies on Poltergeist, right? That's the ghost where, you know, they make a lot of the ghosts apparently in Poltergeist, they make a lot of noise. They pick up tables and chairs and all kinds of other objects within the home. Has that ever happened in the Zalad house? Yes, there's a... There's it has? A, it has happened. There's a chair in the kitchen that was moved approximately four inches at, at one time, and it, we, we saw it. 
we saw it happen. How do you know it wasn't a gust of wind that came through the house? Well, you know, we're, debun <laughs> we're, we're debunkers, too. You know, we, we look to see if there's any strings that we tripped over and that was attached possibly to the chair, like a carpet or something like that. Right. And, you know, we debunk first before we say it's real. Okay, and so is this place haunted? Yes, it's haunted. Yes. It is. Yes. Very much. You believe it is. I believe it is. I know it is. Have you seen it firsthand? Yes. Yes. You have? Yes, we have seen it. You Have you heard voices in there? Uh, yes, we get EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, that, that we record on either on film <laughs> or on voice recorders. And we get real time in your ear. Uh, you can hear the voices actually you, you in your ear. You personally have seen objects move. Yes, I, we have. Uh -huh. I have. Interesting. Well, you need to call Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. So. <laughs> they're retired, uh, right? Yeah, I think they're retired. They're retired. Hey, I want to put up a series of photos so uh, people at home understand uh, the family history of this house. Put up a picture of Mr. and Mrs. Zalid first. We'll start with that. This is William Herbert Brooks uh, and his wife, Annie Salia Zalid. Okay, change the photo. William actually, Brooks. Let me go back to Yeah, that. go back. Okay. That yeah. that's actually John Zalid and Mary Jane Zalid. They're, oh, it they're is. the um okay. the mother and father of Pearl. All right. Who okay. Left the home. I misspoke there because John Zalid, he is the patriarch mm -hmm. uh, who immigrated to this country from Bohemia, ended up in Tulare back in eighteen seventy five. Is that right? Am I right yes. about that? Yeah, yes, you're right. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Let's go to a picture of William Brooks then. Okay, now let me explain this. In, in 1917, he was married uh, to the daughter of John uh, Zalit, right? Uh, but in 1970, uh, 1917, William Brooks was shot to death by a woman in the Porterville Pioneer Hotel. Is that correct? Yes. yes, by Julia wow. Howe. Shot four times. Why? Um, because apparently, she was, would say back then, they didn't have a word for it, but if we said it now, she was a stalker. Um, she oh, so uh, it was kind of a love triangle thing, or basically, or yeah, it was a type of a love triangle. Huh. And he went, he left San Francisco and came back over here to be in his home. And he was uh, in the Pioneer Hotel discussing oh. things about the YMCA. Wow. And uh, she come walking in. Um, she bought a pistol at the local hardware store. Walked in and shot him four times. The first bullet actually pierced his heart. And the chair that he was killed in, with the bullet hole and some of his DNA, is still in the. It's in the Zealot House and upstairs. Really? That chair? Oh, is that the chair right there? That's it. You can see yes. the bullet hole right there. Yeah, you can. You can see the bullet hole. And also, uh, what are those papers on the chair? What's that? That's a story. That's a story that talks about, those are the newspaper articles that came out about the shooting huh. and the trials. So, so he was sitting in that chair when he was shot? In yes. the Pioneer Hotel, yes. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it still has some of the blood stains? It does. It has uh, stuff inside that hole. Unbelievable. One of the interesting things about that, too, is that when she shot him, she said, a good job done, and she waited to be arrested. And she meant to do to it. What happened to her? Was she hanged? Or? No. No, uh, she no. was acquitted, and it was considered to be that she was insane. So we assume she went to an asylum or, yeah. wow. you know, can't find anything else on her right now. Okay. Let's take a picture of Annie Zalid. So Annie Zalid was married to William Brooks. Is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. So she took over the home and cared for it, but she actually uh, lived in Beverly Hills and died in 1962 at the ripe old age of 90. Yes. Is that it? 90 mm -hmm. years old, yeah. And okay. she never remarried. She never remarried all those years. All right, another picture, Pearl Zalad. And so the home was willed to Annie's sister, Pearl. This is Pearl right here, and she hung on to it. Pearl, who died in uh, 1970, left the house with all of its belongings, all of its contents, and everything to the city of Porterville. She willed it to the city, right? Yes. So that's yes. how the city obtained the house. Right. Yes. Exactly. All right. So long family history. And, of course, Ed Zalad, uh, there he is right there. Um, Annie and Pearl had a brother, of course, named Ed. All three were born in Tulare, and all three were the children of John Zalad, that first couple that we showed you earlier in the broadcast here. And so uh, that's kind of the family history. It's kind of confusing a little bit, but I think, you know, we tried to explain it the best we could. Well, there, it's mm -hmm. a tragic family. You know, the things that happened to the family was pretty tragic, uh, what's happened to him. But Ed, he was the guy who kept the whole family business together. He was the was the. He was the finance man. guy? He was the he finance was. guy, yes, and okay. a horse trainer, too, just as well. But this guy, let's put up that picture of John Salad again, because I want to show him and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Salad, because John Salad actually, when they came over here, they had six children, right? Three of them died. Yeah. The three remaining, the ones that I mentioned here, Annie, Pearl, and Ed, are the ones that uh, cared for that Zalit house, 
right? And right. they willed it over to the city, and, basically. Yes, yes, they did. Well, the, the father, John Zellett, he died at the age of 93 in 1944. Yeah. So he did live there. He lived there with Edward until 1922. I see. So in 1922, the two daughters then took care of John Zalad, and for about 40 <laughs> years, nobody really lived in the Zalad house. So it just remained unoccupied. Everything was stored there. They traveled all over the world, and they would just come back and visit the so home. So how many years did that, that place stay empty? About 40 years. Yeah. About 40 years? Until Pearl Zalad moved back in 1962. Okay, I want to roll a piece of videotape inside the Zalad house, if we could. And if we got to roll the monologue tape again, that's fine. I want to, I want to take you inside. So, when I say that all the contents and all the belongings are still there, does that mean the home is as it was? Well, we do back in the day. Yeah, we do clean it and change things around. We change the decor of the home for the season. Uh, we just finished up Christmas, so we had their Christmas ornaments out on the Christmas tree, we had decorations. Really? Now we have um, vintage Valentines. They're Valentine Day uh, cards Thank and you. candy boxes that are um, original to the family. And you can look at these cards, their signatures are on them to who and yeah. from who. Yeah, but that car, like that carpet right there leading upstairs and That's that carpet down, that original carpet? Yeah, it's built good. Wow. The house has never gone through any remodeling uh, we still have 13-foot ceilings, so no air conditioning. Uh, There's just no the air conditioning or heating? Oh, no. She gets beat up in there. <laughs> She's tough. Yeah, no, no air conditioning. Um, I do have a little window AC that was added just for a cooling spot in the house, but uh, for the most part, it's just ran off of fans. What are we looking at there? Photo albums, some of their ivory right there. Those are ivory elephants and ivory blue Collectibles head. from their trips. They travel to the Orient. Uh, they traveled all over the world. Sometimes they'd spend three or four months in, a, in another country. And just leave the house vacant. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that house was built, what, in 1891? 1891. Uh-huh. And never any remodeling's been done in there. Uh, yeah. The house was built with running water and it flushing was. toilets. Yeah. yeah. In 1891? Yeah. 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 They, running they water? Had it. They had it. And toilets. They were rich. They, uh, they got what they paid for. And we could see in the letters when they wrote about their gas lights being converted into electric light. Wow, look at that couch there. Is that couch original? That's all original you're looking at right there. The from, lamps, everything, 1891. From the, from the 1890s, huh? 1890s. That's all original. The kitchen has two stoves in it, a gas and a wood-burning stove. And they use both stoves. What about the piano there? That's, that's a piano that Pearl ordered. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. That's a piano that she taught piano lessons on uh, there in the home. She taught from about 1904 till about 1913. Yeah. And taught to Porterville residents. Boy, and they that's... still play on it. Yeah, it still works, huh? Yeah. Oh, Ever yeah. had a termite inspection? Oh. All the time. All the time. Yeah. We get those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Heather and Benny Huerta are here. They are the caretakers of that Zalad house, and they're also the Ghostbusters of Porterville. 436, Me TV Option 11. Do you believe in ghosts? Turf Medics is our sponsor today here on the program. We're back in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888 nine three six zero four 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 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about turf medics by pro turf the real experts in real green grass talking about ghostbusters and ghosts and the paranormal and um you know do you believe in the paranormal activity that whether or not it exists do you believe in it well, that's the question of the day. Do you believe in paranormal activity? And we're going to put that up on the screen several times throughout the show. You can call in 436-ME-TV, option 11, 
and see if you agree with it. That almost looks like a picture out of the movie Poltergeist. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw that. Anyway, Heather and Benny Cuerta are here. They're the ca caretakers of the Zalad House in Porterville. And so let's go into the kitchen now and check out the kitchen area. So is this whole place haunted or is it just in one certain area? I would say it's all haunted. We we investigate the whole house and but for the most part, you know, we tend to get the most activity upstairs oh. in the home, but it's pretty bedroom much, area. I mean, it's just oh, really sure. all yeah, over. Yeah, bedrooms every sure. Uh Ed's bedroom, that's really heavy duty. Uh, the Brooks room is heavy duty. So Yeah. What are we looking at here? The kitchen? This is a kitchen okay. and uh, as you can see the there is a stove in there that that wood stove was the blue one. This uh -huh. black one is a gas stove. Right. And uh, it's still all original. Uh, the only little tiny bit of upgrades that's been done in there was that little blue tile. And then there's a picture there. It just kind of passed a little real quick, but it um, was a picture taken in 1900 of the John and Mary Jane standing yeah. in front of that stove. Wow, that stove dates back way back to yeah. what, 1890 something? Probably oh, yeah. 1891 or 92 when the house was built. Amazing. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I'm just wanted to call and ask a question. You see, uh, me and my wife bought a home. It's built back in the 1930s. Uh, but we do have something here, I guess. It scared my wife a couple of times. I mean, it actually tried to scare me once, and I just told it. You know, I cut it out and said, you guys have to pull that crap with me. And then it went away. But occasionally we have stuff missing, and, and, and you know, my keys, I'll put them down, and then I can't find them. But then I'll go, you god dang, you have to do what I mean. Uh, and I can cuss. Give me back my keys, and all of a sudden they'll, they'll reappear. I mean, I, I, I've told people this story; they think I'm crazy, but it, you know. But the thing is that really gets me. It's, it's scaring my wife more than it scares me. Um, yeah. there's, there's, there's times now that I mean, I have to go to bed the same time my wife goes to bed because it'll try to get at her at, in the bedroom, but the rest of the house, you know, I mean, it tried to come at me at the in the living room one time, and that's when I pulled it off and it went away, and it stopped bugging me. But yeah, amazing. I told her to do the same thing to it. Is that okay. what you're supposed to do with these things? All right, good I'll question. Take my question up there. Yeah, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Well, don't don't cuss at it. <laughs> you know, you don't want to make it angry for sure, and have some type of protection for yourself if you're, you know, if you're religious. You know, do some prayer and clean. And he did one of the right things: tell it to leave. Most of the time, it will leave. Mm -hmm. You know, if you ask it to leave, because maybe it doesn't want to be there. Maybe it's just something passing through your house. You know, but without a, a, a big investigation. You know, what about calling a priest or maybe pulling out a cross uh, or they crucifixion? Will that make it go away? Will that make it go away? Well, as long as you have that prayer and that belief, yeah, and you ask for it to go away and call on other uh, religious artifacts as well. Some people use like St. Benedict's Medal. Or icons. It, yeah, mm -hmm. icons. Or crosses. Or yeah, any, sure. Th things yeah. like that. Whatever Crystals. works for them. Because yeah. some people might have something else, like a, a coin that they think that has some protection. You know, they, they can use that also. Okay. All right. Well, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, good morning. I'm one of those people that do believe in stuff like this. And I'll tell you why. Uh, my sister and my brother-in-law moved to Las Vegas in 98. Uh, unfortunately, my brother-in-law passed away about eight years ago. And a few days after he passed away, uh, because they had bought a two-story house, and my sister would uh, hear footsteps uh, going up and down the stairs, and certain things would be moved inside the kitchen, which was was you know it never happened before, but all of a sudden my brother-in-law passes away, and they hear noises uh, like I said up and down the stairs, things in the kitchen are moved, and she'd be in her bedroom mm -hmm. and she'd be laying down. And she could feel like somebody was uh, walking up to the room and sitting on the edge of the bed. Huh. Oh, well, that yeah. sounds pretty familiar, huh? Yeah. yeah. So does that happen to you guys? Okay, I appreciate the phone call. Um, Thank you. So are these people that are calling in, especially, you know, the, the last two callers, okay, they, they've had the experience. Mm -hmm. Is it in their mind or is it real, do you well, think? Is they, it real? It, it could, yeah, it could be real. It could be real to them, you know? Uh, we'd... Uh, would ask them to visit our website, give us their email. We'll send them a questionnaire if they really want to get that deep into it. Yeah. You know, who are we to say that it never happened, right? Exactly. Right. Experienced it. Exactly. I mean, who are we to say? Exactly. Right. You know, exactly. That's why we're investigating this thing. That's see amazing. If this is for amazing. real. 
I wonder if this place is haunted. Have you heard any strange noises around here on, on the set? <laughs> uh, no, unless you heard my belly growl. I mean, <laughs> other, than, other than that, no, we can that investigate. That cup isn't going to move on its own, is it? Well, <laughs> All right. hope not. All right, you're on Connect With Me. Go ahead, caller. What's your question? Quickly. Hi, John. Just was wondering, have they ever had, um, like, a priest or any kind of religious uh, leader or pri uh, priest, rabbi, whatever, come out to the uh, the Zalad house and perform any sort of uh, rituals or anything and yeah. if so maybe they could tell us a little bit about that okay uh, take my answer off the, the air. How about that? No rituals. We don't do any rituals like that. Nothing to... Uh, You're get... not going to call a priest or a rabbi? Well, we're reverends. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. We, um, there isn't anything that's been um, so say harmful or scary about the house. It's actually a kind of a happy haunt. Oh, so okay. It's yeah, you don't think these before. ghosts are harmful then? And huh? it's their home still. Yeah, not there. Yeah, but you don't know who these people are. You don't know who these ghosts are. It could be the, the Zalad family. It could be somebody else. Caller, you're on the air. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I unfortunately uh, lost a member of my family a few months ago. And I noticed that after that happened, my dog, once in a while, out of the blue, will start staring uh, at a certain part of the place, and it's like uh, the dog's looking at that person, the height and everything, and then all of a sudden it gets cold in front of my body. Is that a normal thing? We or actually, or what? We actually hear that. Uh, it's very common, and I hear um, that from a lot of people that say that the animal will stare off into the corner of a room or uh, and, and, and just start actually, barking. I see, I see my dog walking or looking as it, it's like somebody walking. But there's nobody there. So the dog is tracking. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've had dogs, and especially dogs themselves, be tracking. Mm -hmm. So can animals, like cats, dogs, whatever, pick up on it more easily than, say, a human being? We believe they're more grounded, more sensitive to it. Yeah. They, they hear at a higher frequency than us. We, you know, they, they're just more sensitive they're to it. They're in tune. Yeah. yeah. They're in tune to Earth. That's so. amazing. All right, got to go to break. Um, we are talking with um, Heather and uh, Benny Huerta. They're uh, the Ghostbusters of Porterville, I like to call them. 436, Me TV, Option 11. Hey, let's put up the question of the day real quick. Do you believe in paranormal activity? Have you ever experienced it in your own home or somebody else's home or in your garage or your bedroom or your kitchen or whatever the case may be? If so, call us at 436, Me TV, Option 11. Hey, my friends, we don't think you're crazy. We think it's real, right? Do you think it's real? Is it real? It's real. It's, it's real. real. So don't be bashful. Do call in. We have a caller calling in already? Oh, my goodness. We we're going to go to break, but you know what? Let's take the call real quick. Caller, you're on the air on Connect With Me. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I've been there since I was little, um, um, touched by spirits. Yeah. And um, I actually had one um, follow me for almost 18 years. And wow. um, I told my granny I had to move out of my apartment because I felt this and I seen this black shadow over over me like a black cloud. And okay. then I seen the spirit come and subdue me and I started praying you know, to God. But um, actually, huh. and when I moved to my apartment, I moved away. Granny sent me a newspaper clipping like a couple months later. The lady who moved in there mur was murdered. Wow. 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 wow, what a story. That's amazing. How long ago did this happen? This happened when um, I was 27. Um, when I was 26, I, I happened upon um, a dead body up in the Ojai Mountains, which was um, so how many years over ago? an open fire. How many years ago? Pardon me? How many years ago? Okay, um, say 31. Okay. But I'm still continuously um, um, connect with spirits. I mean, they they continuously, um, you know, um, walk by me or around me or I see them. Just they're like um, a, a dark image. Or sometimes I'll see their feet. Or sometimes I'll see them sitting in a chair in my room and just sitting there looking at me. Huh. So do you just pray them away and then they take off? Well, um, the ones that are bad, yeah. The other ones I tell them, you know, just to 
Um, you, you don't have nothing better to do than sit and watch me. I mean, you know. Wow. Um, I try not to be really rude, you know, um, now because I, I understand more. But the the bad ones, yeah, I've only had one really bad one. And when he did find me after uh, about 20-some years, he was so angry. When he came at me, he came at me with a vengeance. Well, sounds like you really got a serious problem there. Uh, go to our website and see if you can get some information off of that. What and website is that? That's paranormalmovement.com. And right. we have uh, the PCN also. Okay. All right. Thank you, caller. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for the call. Hey, question of the day. Let's put that up one more time before we go to break. Uh, do you believe in paranormal activity? Ever had any strange occurrences take place in your own home? Maybe a friend's home? Maybe your garage, your patio, your backyard? Who knows where? At work? <laughs> You're at work, right? I don't know. 436, me TV, option 11. Hey, Turf Medics is our sponsor today on the program. Back in just a moment. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Hey, we're back here on the program, and the question of the day is, do you believe in paranormal activity? Caller, you're on the air. Uh, what's, your, what's your answer to the question? Do you believe in it? Yeah, hi, hi John. Hey, how are you? You believe in paranormal I saw, activity? I saw, the, I, saw the movie, I saw the movie Exorcist, and ever since I saw the movie, I don't want nothing to do with ghosts <laughs> and devils. And, and ever, ever since that, I just... Yeah. I just don't like those kind of movies. Okay. But anyway, have right. a good day. That's all I have to say. All right. Uh, we ask that when you do call in, we appreciate it if you would turn down the sound on your television set, because on that last call we had a lot of feedback. So if you can try to remember to do that, but call in. Question of the day, we'll put that on the screen one more time so you can look at it. Do you believe in paranormal activity? We are here with uh, Heather and Benny Huerta from Porterville. Uh, the Zalad House apparently is, according to them, uh, haunted. I want to take you back into the Zalad House, and let's go to the outdoor garden. And uh, any activities that have, uh, any unusual activity happen in the outdoor garden, let's put it that way. So is it in the house and outside the house and everything else, or what? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about what? the Strange. woman in white. Okay. There's, what a, there's, a few, there's a few stories, actually. Yeah. Tell us. I'm dying um, to know. Here. Come <laughs> on. Dying. The, um, well, I do know that our gardeners, a lot of times, they'll feel like somebody's watching them and, like... Um, there's always too. been the garden has always been a very overgrown garden, and that's the way uh, Pearl well, likes this, the garden. Wait a minute, what's this woman in white? Explain that. Well, uh, and the and gardener get, saw somebody. A lot of people who walk by, especially you know during the day in the evening when it's closed, will see a woman walking in that grassy area where we do our weddings at, where we perform the weddings. They'll say they'll see a woman standing there or walking through it. Benny, in, Benny, in white. you want me to believe that? That's what they're telling me. <laughs> but I, it's, not, have, it's not either it's i can't say yes and i can't say no until we capture that footage exactly I but we have had other we want it too yeah but we have had other uh things go on in that garden so um we a lot of people get married in this garden and yeah. many of them will say it looks like somebody's watching them from upstairs they see the curtain pull back they say the curtain's pulling back anything Look. weird happened to them after they get married no, no, not that we've nothing. Nothing. All right, caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I was wondering if there's a compilation of uh, places in the valley that are haunted, like the Kings County Courthouse or Muscle, what is it, uh, Muscle Slew Massacre, that area. Uh, is there a, a number of books that, or books that tell you where there's haunted places in the valley well we don't have any books that say where it's haunted but um, there is a, a local 
uh, book writer Jeff Edwards at his gallery on, on Main Street. He has a lot of books in the history of Tulare County of all the certain cities and, um, and about some of the tragedies that has happened around, like the Muscle Slew uh, Massacre, as you mentioned. Um, there, and it, it's all written in his books, and he has, what, uh, at least 100 books that you can purchase at his gallery. All right, another call coming in. Good morning, caller. You're on the air on Connect With Me. Caller? Yes, uh, let me ask a question to both of the, your guests there. Uh, do they believe ghosts are spirits? In other words, ghosts, you can see ghosts. If, if they see them, you know, it's, it, it's a vision where spirits are totally different, you know. But I would say one thing. As I was growing uh, uh, a, a young man, my mom was involved with a lot of those, not a, like a seance, okay? In other words, they were able to talk to the spirits, okay? Yeah. Good or bad. Okay. And, and I don't want to take the, I don't want to take a lot of time. But my, my question is to you, do you think that ghosts are spirits? In other words, ghosts are visuals. Uh, you, can, right. you, know, you, you can see mm -hmm. it sometimes, uh, a, a, a figure, and spirits are just spirits where Sometimes they, they will talk or whatever or knock or whatever or scare you, you know, good okay. or bad. But they're caught in between the, the, all right. the world, okay? So that's, that's all I yeah. want to ask you. So there's a difference between ghosts and spirits and are ghosts spirits? We, we believe that the ghosts are spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, there are apparitions where the ghosts can manifest and make them appear, but usually it's very hard to see something like that. It's at the blink of an eye. If you capture it, capture it, you see it, it's gone the minute you recognize it. So it's not something that's just going to float in front of you. Not what we've experienced. It's not going to sit there and float in front of you or, or um, be monstrous or anything like that. Another piece of videotape, historical landmark. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, the whole house is a historical landmark, yes. but is there one particular landmark that uh, is in or around the home? Is that it right there? Yeah, that's the home. That, that right there is a plaque on the uh, entrance of the Zalot House. The property has been placed in the National Registry of Historical Places. So and the whole old house, places. the whole plot, the yes. land, the home, not any one particular artifact, but the entire the uh, home estate is, yeah. is a historical yes. landmark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, deemed by who? The city of Porterville or the state it's, or? The it's National own, Registry. National Registry, okay, okay, and there's some old photos there, of course, this whole uh, area is a national landmark, no question about it, and uh, oh man, so here's an email question, what kind of a financing or endowment did Pearl leave to keep the museum or the house going? She her. did leave an endowment, and uh, in the How much? I'm not really exactly positive on the amount that was left, um, I do know that there was some money left for the home. Uh, there was a seven-year litigation before the home opened as a museum. So, Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a couple of men in the Bakersfield area that were claiming they were the heirs of the home, but it was a fraud, so that wasn't exactly the yeah. case. So was the home haunted before the Zalad family died, or was it after Pearl died? Well, Pearl was looking for questions, you know, and thinking she was feeling her mom and dad and brothers in the house. And so it's been years, years before that. Yeah. Right. Like she died in 1970, right? Right. Okay, so you're talking prior to 1970, this place is they thought it was haunted. Yeah, even yeah. the first curator thought it was haunted. Really? Even though she didn't believe in it, but she sure wrote about it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What year was that? Oh, when did, 1977. When did okay, all right. Caller, you're, are you there? Go ahead. Yes. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that um, since the age of three years old, I have seen ghosts and spirits and everything and uh, it's just a very <laughs> wonderful thing to be able to see such things and um, I would like to talk to the people and ask them a few questions if possible okay well you're on the air so go ahead ask uh, we're short on time so go ahead and ask ask them uh, the question that you want they're listening go ahead you're on the air okay Oh. Quickly. It's got to be quick, though. Okay. Um, I would just like to let you guys know that I've seen uh, ghosts and spirits since the age of three. Um, I've lived in several haunted, haunted houses, and I feel that I have always been protected by the ghost. Right. Okay. What's your question? 
What's your question? Was it that uh, you were wanting? My, my question is, is why do certain people are able to see spirits and ghosts and other people are not? Ah, great question. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Why is that? What, they're more sensitive to it. Uh, they they're more open and intuitive to um, the spirits. They've reached out to it, so that just makes them that much better to the sensitivity. Really? Yeah. So that's the simple answer, huh? That's mm -hmm. a simple answer. All right, we got some more videotape to show you uh, family artifacts, and I do want to talk about these uh, because I'm kind of interested. You know, I'm, I I love history. So what are we looking at here? That's a picture of the house when it snowed uh, in okay. 1999. All right. And these are pictures of uh, Ed and Pearl. That's the father, John Zalid. He's there sitting he in the kitchen window. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. I see that. And uh, we got his glasses on display, the ones that he's wearing. Okay, so you have those glasses on display. He's reading the newspaper, apparently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what other kind of artifacts are, those are, are in the um, home? opera glasses. Pearl studied music at New England Conservatory of Music. She went to a lot of plays and operas, and uh, those are her Glasses. Are these pictures on the mantel here in the, yeah. in the main living this room? This is or? actually a little cabinet that's oh, okay. in the um, one of the bedrooms. Uh huh. There's the glasses that John was wearing right there in oh, that photo. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's Annie. Annie was also a milliner, so like the hat she's wearing in that picture, she made that. Okay. Those are the type of hats that she would make. Okay. The Zalud women were really fashionable. Then, yeah. So they is that right? A lot yeah. of art in the house. So if you um, come to visit, all the paintings that are on the wall are by Annie Zalid. And then uh, the needlework that's on the chairs in the, throughout the home, there's about 25 pieces, and that was done by Pearl Zalid. Right. We have several more videotapes that we need to get to before we end this segment, and I do want to get to the bedroom one, two, and three, so let's roll those uh, simultaneously here. Uh, we'll go to bedroom number one here. I want to get all these in before we got to leave. Now, is this the main uh, bedroom, uh, obviously the master bedroom, uh, occupied is, by John? This is actually a very large room. It sits at the, at the top of the stairs, and it was considered a sewing room. Oh, but this okay. is uh, the bedroom that the mother was brought to when she was ill. She died of tuberculosis in 1912. In that bedroom? In that bedroom. Yeah, in that oh. bed. In that bed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the linens, the sheets, uh, you know, the bedspreads, everything are original. That's the sewing machine. The dresses that you've seen on the stands are original dresses that were made by the mother. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Amazing. That's a big trunk that you see. It's covered up, but um, this is a, a big trunk, and that trunk has been all over the world. It has. Uh -huh. Traveled with. Them, yes. That's what they would travel with. Uh-huh. That's pretty amazing stuff there. It's very historical, and as you can you can tell just by looking, you know, at the home inside some of the artifacts, they had mm -hmm. quite a bit of money, right? They yeah, spent they a did. lot of money. Yes, they did spend a lot yeah. of money. That's yeah, pearls. on clothing and other things, other yeah. items, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are we looking at there? That's a suitcase. It has pearls initials on it. Those are uh, spats, and her boots. That's another dress on the stand that's right behind it. Um, it's handmade. That's the needle point. Uh, there are several pieces like that that's on the chairs. And um, it's just, a, you know, it's a lot of really fascinating detailed work in a lot of these uh, pieces. Okay, roll the videotape. We'll go to bedroom number two. We have uh, three more pieces of videotape to show you here. What, what, what's this here? Uh, this is Pearl's bedroom, and it has her original okay. dolls in the room. Uh, she collected dolls, and some of them are dolls that she played with when she was a young girl. Uh -huh. uh, this is a picture of Pearl uh, when she graduated from music school. And, Very young uh, there. Yeah, she had the opportunity to go to the very first music school that was offered in the United States. Okay. okay. So this is her secretary, her desk. There's um, personal items on there, valentines, receipt books, photo albums. Yep. No internet back then, huh? No. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, the... T the that uh, right there is a doll uh, in the buggy. It's a doll that she's holding in one of the pictures. That's her dress? That's a dress she wore in that picture that you just saw. Uh-huh, and that's her bed. That's her bed. And her nightstand. Her nightstand and all of her little dolls. There's a bird cage in the window. It's an empty bird cage, uh, but the original bird that used to sit in that cage sits wow. in a glass case. And the final bedroom, bedroom number three here, 
uh, a long piece of videotape, so we're going to go through this uh, with a fine-tooth comb. What are we looking at here? Is this the master bedroom, by the way? No, this is Edward's room. Oh, okay. uh, Edward Zalid, uh, the son, he died uh, due to a horse accident on their ranch. They owned about 3,000 acres of cattle and wow. wheat. Uh, they owned a saloon on Main Street. They did uh -huh. a lot of gambling in that saloon. So these are cards and poker chips, dice, I was things just that come from say, there. Yeah. yeah, and that's Ed's branding iron right there. It he is? It has his initials on it. Really? And that's the saddle he was riding when he was killed. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So he had that horse accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's uh -huh. more of the paintings. The paintings are by Annie Zellid Brooks. How'd they so. make their money? Through well, the ranching and um, the, the bar, saloon. the saloon that they had, the saloon, and they uh, and Ed gambled and won a lot of uh, property that way also. Is that right? Yeah. Looking at one of Ed's suits here. That's his yeah. suit and bowler. And his and his uh, was that a hat there? Yeah, on yeah. top. That's his bowler. Okay. And a cowboy hat in there. You'll see. Yeah, a number of artifacts. Very interesting. There's the over 400 too. books in this house. They didn't own a television, so what they would do is read to each other. And they did a lot of reading, a lot of music, a lot of art. A lot of letter writing. I yeah. see. Same I see. It. Hey, one more piece of videotape as we uh, zoom in there, and that is the, the bathroom area. So when were the bathrooms put in, or were they original? They're original. Okay. Uh, it was said that the original bathtub was a lead bathtub, and then it, they later brought in the six-foot clawfoot tub. Okay. Um, I don't know the date of when that was brought in, but All the right. house was built with water, uh, so they did pump the water up to this bathroom. Wow. Wow, look at that. That's all original, huh? Yes, that's yeah. all original. That bathtub that we saw there a moment ago, that's original? Yes. And, and the, the toilet there? The, the toilets, see. yeah, once they got all that plumbing in there, yeah, it was, it's original, everything you're looking at, even that terrazzo flooring. Wow, okay. Well, you know what, sadly we're out of time, so uh, quickly a phone number, how people can get in touch with you. It's 559-782-7548. All right, Zalikas. Heather and Benny Huerta, thank you very much. Yes. I appreciate thank it. You. Good to see us. you. Anytime. All right, the Haunted House, the Zalad House in Porterville. Go down and check it out. We're glad that you guys are here. Happy New Year to both of you. All right, today's program sponsored by Turf Medics. We're back in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. The Ballad of Andy and Barney Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever crook in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law. And, and they didn't know fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me. And baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Ladies Night was started in his honor. Barstools pulled themselves out for him. The only thing Chuck Norris is afraid of is her. Cheers is the most memorable bar in the world. You may not always watch comedy, but when you do, watch Cheers. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Back here on the program on Connect With Me, our final remaining uh, minutes here to talk about uh, some uh, other items and today's uh,
program is sponsored by Turf Medics, of course, and uh, our good friend out there, the former running back for the Fresno State Bulldogs, and uh, of course the the NFL, uh, who owns part of uh, that company, Turf Medics, is our sponsor today. Now to time to turn our attention toward the SPCA here in the city of Fresno. And joining us is Thalia Arena. She's been here before many times. And Janelle uh, Hoya, uh, both from the SPCA. So you're here to tout your, what, adoption program? Uh, volunteer opportunities, actually. So, okay, and yes. adoptions. And adoptions, both, yes. They're yeah. very important because without the volunteers, we can't have as many adoptions as we would like. So it's uh, great to promote those services as well. We always need the help. Okay, what about the volunteer program? What do you, what do you, what are your needs? Okay, so we uh, definitely have a need for the uh, to fill our adult volunteer positions. Um, we have four levels of volunteer experience. Uh, we have group service, so for like churches, clubs, things like that, and uh -huh. then we also have the adult program. Then we have the fourteen to seventeen youth work experience program, which that's what Janelle uh, pertains to, oh, and okay. then we have the junior program for the eight to thirteen. So we have like four levels of volunteer experience at the SPCA. So Janelle, you're fairly new. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's no. She's been with us for like two years now, okay. um, but she's part of the fourteen to seventeen youth work how experience. Old, how program. old are you? I'm fourteen. Fourteen years yeah. old. Okay, so, so she, you're yeah, part she, of that youth program yeah, that you're talking right. about. She just moved up. She was in the junior program, and she's now in the youth work experience program. So, at what age do they start, or can you start to become a volunteer? As low as eight years old. So. As eight years mm -hmm, old, you can be yeah. a volunteer. So, yes. how many hours a day would you spend at the SPCA? Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the uh, program, the hours vary. Uh, we do have an orientation uh, Saturday, January 10th, which is tomorrow at 11 a.m. So, if anybody's interested in signing up. That's oh. the day that they would sign up. Okay, so if they if they if they do want to sign up, go tomorrow mm -hmm. at eleven o'clock, and the SPCA is located where? On one hundred three South Hughes, um, okay. here in Fresno, uh, behind the Belmont Cemetery. So we're like close um, off of the ninety nine or the one eighty on Marks. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question about the adoption uh, program. Of course, um, you know. Uh, there is an abundance and almost an overload of dogs and cats mm -hmm. in the area. We all know that. We talk about spay and neuter and all that kind of stuff. How many, how many animals do you have right now up for adoption at the SBCA, and how is the adoption program going? Are people coming in and adopting these animals? Mm -hmm. Correct. So during December, we had good adoption specials due, through, due to the 100K uh, challenge that we won, and we got money from the ASPCA, so it was like a co-pay system. Um, the adopter only paid like, um, it was $40 for the adoption, and the rest of the money came from that from that fund. Um, so we actually have a couple of, uh, quite a few of empty cages, which is a good thing, because we had so many adoptions in December, but they're going to uh, be filled quite quickly, actually. What dogs so. are people going for? Don't um, tell me pit bulls. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, well, you get a little bit of everything, actually. Really? So, yeah, I mean, as as most know, pit bulls and chihuahuas are the most common breed in shelters, but people come for everything. They come for German Shepherds, they come from, like, Huskies, everything, pretty much, and we have all of that at the SPCA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. now let me ask you something, Janelle. What have you learned at the SPCA? I've learned a lot, actually. I learned how to like care for animals. Even though we're not able to handle the animals, I get to make treats for them, blankets, and different things. I get to learn from office work for future references and just different, just different things for... You glad you uh, joined up to be a volunteer? Oh yes, I'm very happy I got to join. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now let me ask you something. You you did bring a critter here, one yeah. of the little ones, of course. Mm -hmm. We can't bring him on set because he had a little accident. Yeah. Let's put it that way. So uh, give us the hours. We've got less than a minute to go mm -hmm. here. When people can go in and make the adoption and quickly again, tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, tomorrow at 11 we have our volunteer orientation and so it's about an hour and a half if you guys are interested in signing up. And the adoption center is open every day from 10 to 5 and on Wednesdays until 6. So uh, yeah, we have many animals available for adoption from horses, exotics, and different animals What does like it that. cost? It depends on the animal? Yeah, it, it does. Uh -huh. Yes, we have different adoption fees. Okay. All right. Thalia, good to see Thank you. Thank you for having Happy us again. New Year. Yeah, Happy you're going to come back again. Oh, yeah, we'll be here. And, you know, I know you'll bring an animal or yes, a we'll dog or a cat uh, the next time. Good to see you, Janelle. Good luck to you. And uh, the adoption program and certainly the volunteer program at the SPCA. That's going to do it for us. Hope you have a great weekend. We're back on Monday with Dennis Hart. See you then.